Number 10 is The Sweet Life on Deck. This is the spin-off of The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And don't worry, you'll know, that'll be on this list. And I'm not going to spoil anything else about this list now, but The Sweet Life on Deck might have been the last good thing that Disney Channel has done. I didn't really care for Wizards of Waverly Place or Good Luck Charlie or anything. Even though I did say I did watch some of the episodes, especially the, the, the lesbian one, but that's beside the point. So, with Sweet Life on Deck, you know, they're moving away. Well, not really moving away. They're going on a ship because they're high schooled on that ship. And London goes with them. Not Maddie, though, because I guess she was just a candy girl. London really needs it because she's, well, everyone knows she's dumb as hell. So, uh, Mr. Mosby's going with them. Because I imagine, would you really want to be a hotel manager for the rest of your life? And plus, Mr. Mosby was pretty awesome. Let's just be honest. Uh, what's the actor's name? Phil Lewis. Interesting fact about him. In 1994, 5, 6 maybe? I can't remember. But he, uh, he was in a... He was charged for manslaughter for driving drunk and hitting somebody. How weird is that? That makes, you know, imagine if he was, like, really violent on Zack and Cody. You little, you little shitheads, get out of my hotel! Okay, no, no that, that wouldn't be on Disney Channel. But anyways, The Sweet Life on Deck, it had new characters such as uh, Bailey Pickett, played by Debbie Ryan, who's on Jesse now. Now, I've only watched a couple episodes of that show, so I can't really tell you myself if I hate it or not, but I don't really like it. And I'm probably not going to watch more. I might, maybe. I have to give some things a chance, right? So, I don't know. She's really hot, but that's not, like, why... That's not the only reason why I like her. She was actually pretty funny, a pretty good actress. She was, uh... I think before that, she was maybe acting in commercials. Or maybe that was her first thing ever. I can't remember, but it was pretty new for her. For Disney. So, that was cool. There was also Woody... Now, he was really weird. I mean, if you remember that the show wasn't too long ago, I think. Well, when did it end? 2010, 11? So, what do you... I remember the first episode, he's like, you know, it's like, I can fight, I can, I can fart, stare away to heaven by Led Zeppelin if we eat a Mexican buffet. And it's like, that's like a ten minute song. And he's like... Well, it's like like I said, it's only a, during a Mexican buffet, which we're having tonight. And now, usually I'm not really a big fan of fart and shit jokes. Because that's what the Happy Madison, Adam Sandler audience is for. I hate those people. I hate, well, I don't hate Adam Sandler. He can be funny as a stand-up, but he does have some good songs too. But that's beside the point. But yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. And the series finale was had some touchy moments. Like, I think Mr. Mosby gave London his phone numbers, like, call me anytime you need me or want to talk to me or whatever, something like that. And, like, she, they're, like, a few steps away, she calls him. No, it, no, he says if you ever have a problem. So, like, she, there are a few steps, a <coughs> sorry, there are a few steps away. So, she calls him right there, says, I'm going to miss you. And he gets all teary and they hug and it was actually pretty sad. And... I remember there was that one, there was a couple episodes where they do like a parody like Ghostbusters and Star Trek. And I remember Marcus, I think that was that one black kid's name who was on there for a while. And I think he was supposed to be like semi-rich as well. I can't really remember him as well. But yeah, Sweet Life on Deck wasn't that bad. Number nine, Emperor's, Emperor's New School. Now this was based off the movie The Emperor's New Groove, which is... <coughs> Sorry, I got tip on my throat all of a sudden talking but the, Emperor, the Emperor's New Groove was a pretty good movie um the voice of Cusco from the movie was David Spade I believe who is not the voice in the show which can be a little disappointing but who they got was pretty, pretty much sound like him oh who they got I can't remember the actor's name but I remember he was the principal of the high school from Phil the Future so that's kind of a funny fact I can't believe I didn't talk about him during when I was talking about Phil the Future, but <clears throat> the Emperor's New Groove um, school was Cusco had to <coughs> sorry graduate high school in order to order in order to become emperor again, and 
I think they do do that by the last episode. I can't really remember. That show ended when I was 12, I believe, and it started when I was 10. Again, these shows, they don't last a long time, and that kind of sucks. I mean, really, what, did he only go from two years of high school? Did they start from when he was from the 10th grade? And even then, like, what did he do after high school? I mean, obviously he went back to doing Emperor again, but at least, like, have a few episodes of what he's doing as Emperor again, but whatever. Melina was the new character, because she wasn't in the movie. And I guess she was kind of hot, but I can't really say I had a crush on her. But for, like, a cartoon companion for Cusco, she was pretty hot. So, yeah, Kronk, he's awesome. He's really stupid. He's like... He's sort of like the human version of Patrick Starr from Spongebob. And he's voiced by fucking Patrick, uh, fucking, what's his last name, Wartburton or something like that. Uh, if I'm getting this wrong, a lot of people are going to hate me for that. But Patrick Wartburton, he's, you know, he's Joe from Family Guy. He's in the Mr. Peabody and Sherman movie, the, you know, not the old cartoons, but the new movie that came out recently. And he does some other stuff. I, I remember seeing him in a college humor video, uh, something about being a basic bitch, but that's beside the point. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy, I imagine. He's a pretty good voice actor. He has a cool voice. He, his voice has been in a couple of commercials now, I remember. But anyways, Kron Yzma, voiced by Eartha Kitt. I remember, you know, her from Holes, which was a good movie. Uh, Madame Zeroni. Because if you don't come back from Madame Cerrone, you and your family will be cursed for always and eternity. I don't know why I did that. I was bored. But she was also Catwoman from the 60s Batman with Adam West. That's beside the point. I'm a really nerdy person like that. I know stuff like that. I watch stuff like that. I know people who do as well. But, you know, and I'm only 18 years old, still in high school. About to graduate. That's beside the point. Who cares? I'm not really looking forward to it. But that's beside the point. So, yeah, they, they're still, she's still trying to turn him into an animal, which really, I mean, it works. He does turn into that animal if he drinks potion, but it kind of backfires because it always works out for him somehow. And Cusco is a pretty selfish, full of himself, kind of a, kind of a douche in a way. So, like, why, why would you root for this guy? Well, he is kind of lovable, and he's not the worst person ever. He just, he definitely has some faults, but... You know, you still kind of, you want him to be happy at least, but while trying to not make everybody else miserable, because he does uh, give Poncho, I believe that guy's name, he lives with them for a while. Wasn't he voiced by John Goodman? I, I can't remember. I really wish I could work in a Big Lebowski reference there, but I don't think I can do it right now. Well, maybe, am I the only one? No, no, that doesn't work. Okay, but... Keep talking. I'm not even looking at the timer. I don't know how long I've been talking now. And I'm not even editing this because, I don't know, if the Undertaker freak and the Arch thing don't have to do it. Why should I? But, okay, now I'm just sounding lazy. I'm sorry. But, you know, Emperor's New School, if you haven't seen it, I doubt it's on YouTube again. Copyright Nazis, but. Uh, number eight, The Proud Family. Now, I think I appreciate the show more now that I'm older than I did as a kid because some of the episodes where they t tackled a serious subject kind of bored me because you know I was just a little kid and I didn't really care I didn't really get them but now there's like those episodes that are dealing with certain people's religious beliefs like there's that uh the Muslim family the exchange program thing that they did where oh my god how come I can't remember Penny that's the main girl's name right Penny I really hope I'm getting this right because, like I said, off of memory and I must be having Alzheimer's or something. But, you know, she goes a little in that Muslim family for like Ramadan where, you know, I don't hate Muslims, but, you know, I try to be tolerant of all religious beliefs. As long as you don't shove them down my throat or anyone else's throat, I'm fine. You know, I don't believe all Muslims are terrorists, but, you know, that's another topic for another video, I guess. So, yeah, and there was, like, a really kind of scary scene in that episode where there was actually, on the garage door, was, like, go back to your country. Now, even when I was a little kid, I thought that struck me as, ooh, ooh, mm, you know. And there actually are some funny episodes, or even more episodes where there are more dangerous situations. Uh, Oscar, 
the dad. Now everyone remembers him. He tried to make proud snacks, snacks, whatever, something like that, and they they taste like shit. Okay, that's what everyone said, right? And Trudy, are you Trudy? You know, whatever. She was kind of a hot mom. Yeah, I guess you can say I had a crush on her. But when she was pissed, God, she was pissed. And the same thing for Oscar's mom, the grandma. What was her name? She had a specific name. I remember she's voiced by Harriet from Family Matters. So that's an interesting fact. I think that's true anyways. And even one of the episodes they reference Family Matters. It's like, And it's like, you know, this is worse than like an Oscar's like, the time you quit Family Matters? And, you know, whatever. But it's kind of weird that I remember that. I don't know. But I say but a lot, don't I? Anyways and the word anyways and there was that episode where they go camping like not just that not just the proud family that was their last name but their friends too god how come i can't remember most of these people's names that's really sucks when i'm talking about how much i like these shows and i'm i'm not providing enough strong evidence for that am i now am i i should really at least research the characters names but you know freaking her friends now one of them was the rich girl cross street who was a bitch and she had really big duck like feet because I remember that episode and there's that the one voiced by Orlando Brown who was Eddie from that Sir Raven I believe I can't remember that guy's fucking name was it Sticky? Sticky? I don't know uh, that'd be kinda weird I don't know that might be true but you got Sticky I think now there's also that weird white redhead braced girl what was it Zoe? I, I really I need to research <laughs> but yeah oh yeah the that one Spanish talking dude I think he had green hair he kind of looked like a, the Joker's mentally retarded rather but that's beside the point he talked nothing in Spanish and the grandma from the proud family would always hit on him and well sometimes he would hit on her but that was like in very few episodes and that's if like she did something nice for him like save his life break him out of that one that that fake retirement center that really put old people to work how crazy is that and then it was like a prison literally they broke him out of a jail cell i believe and with with her toe she picked the lock with her toenail that was weird now um you think, I think they had a few rappers and musicians, yes sir, in some of those episodes, I can't remember. Maybe Ray Charles was in one of them, I can't remember. God, I really cannot remember, So, but that's pretty cool if that did happen. Um, I'm not much of a rap person, but that's not, I'm not referring to Ray Charles there, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, there were some definitely episodes of dealing with racism, other people's religious beliefs. Um, you know, they didn't do anything really extreme. That's kind of average, I guess, nowadays, dealing with racism and stuff. That's really bad when that's a daily thing. Like, that shouldn't even exist. We shouldn't have to. But, you know, I live in the South. I'm surrounded by stupid, racist rednecks. But, you know, another topic for another video. So, the Proud Family, um... Uh, Really good episodes. The Halloween one where they actually get superpowers. That was pretty crazy. Um, so, yeah. 